Just in case you missed it, last week Apex Twin released a sample mashing app called Sample Brain. I made a video as soon as it came out, you can check it out over here. Audio internet went pretty crazy about this news. Uh, some thought that this was genius, some thought that it was Apex Twin uh, being a troll as usual. Which by the way is entirely understandable coming from the guy who made the track out of phone pranks or that print is portrait into the spectrogram of his own music <laughs> but i dug a little bit deeper uh, in the app so i wanted to make another video about it a pretty interesting thing that i learned about the app is that this was originally inspired by the technology behind shazam quoting the original blog article which by the way is really interesting i'm gonna link it down below please have a look this idea came about a long time ago not sure exactly when 2002 ish but when mp3s started to become a thing when for the first time there were a ton of them sitting on my hard drive and the brilliant Shazam had recently launched. Started thinking, mm, all this music sitting here maybe can be used for something else other than just playing or DJing. I had originally contacted the founders of Shazam to discuss further creative uses of their genius idea, but they were busy making an automatic DJ program. I still think Shazam could be repurposed for something incredible, but in the meantime we had Sample Brain. I think this is really cool. If this was a prank, and I'm not excluding that it was, it was a very elaborate one. Let's get started. So first of all, I think the team behind Simple Brain uh, realized that most people are not used to dealing with repositories and they relabel things in the original link uh, in a bit of a clearer way. And the GitLab actually changed a lot already in the last week. So let's have a proper look together. Now you find what was before called uh, the binaries under a more clear download. And here you find the installers for both Windows and Mac. Previously, there was only one installer uh, for Intel and then I added a second installer for M1. Now there is a single installer that works for both. And I also see a old broken spurious uh, binaries. So if you had one of those and you had no success in installing the app, please try the new one because they clearly updated something. There were a bunch of people that were reporting having no sound and not managing to install the app. Uh, have also look at the issues tab here in the repository. And if you still having trouble, please submit an issue. I'm sure that this will help the team making the app better. And if you're on Mac, as is very typical with non-commercial programs, remember that you need to tell your Mac that it's actually okay to install software from this developer. And if you don't know it, you do this by going into System Preferences, clicking on Security and Privacy, and when you try to install it, you'll get a message over here and you just need to click on OK. And finally, do keep in mind that this is pretty much beta software. One of the questions that I saw in my comment section and also elsewhere on the internet is whether this app is neural network based or not. I'm not an expert and I don't know very much about neural networks and AI, so I can't answer that. But I think that there are some pretty big clues that this is at least thought to be inserted into a neural network. First of all, one of the algorithms is called uh, synaptic over here. And then there is this net tab, which is really exciting to me. This allows you to control multiple instances of sample brain over the network, all running their own brain simultaneously. This feature has not been tested well. It's basically telling you that you can put multiple computers with several instances of um, sample brain and make a neural network with them. But I would say that clues are even in the actual description of the app. Sample Brain chops samples up into a brain of interconnected small sections called blocks, which are connected into a network by similarity. It processes a target sample, chopping it up into blocks in the same way, and tries to match each block with one in its brain to play in real time. But as I said, definitely not an expert. I know very little about this kind of thing. So do let me know in the comments if you know something more. Okay, let's bring some samples in. So I got some slightly different stuff compared to last time. I have again some cello samples. <laughs> some trailer booms, some hi-hat loops, some pretty cool kick loops. I have more tracks of mine that I want to use as targets.
but also like this piano one. I was really curious to see what happens when the blocks try to match a piano, piano solo track. And I got some picked piano samples. I have some post-rock guitar samples. I got some snare loops. I got some vocals. A bunch of stuff. Let's drop all this stuff in and let's see what happens. I wish there was a drag and drop version, by the way, or that at least you could put more than one sample at once, but I understand. And then let's load one of the target. Let's start with the, let's start with the piano track actually. I think it would be cool. By the way, I couldn't find a way to change the dark mode for this one. I normally like uh, apps in uh, dark mode, but this one is not very readable because of these white over bright gray uh, highlighting. Uh, I think it just takes it from the system, so I would have to change the preferences on my entire system, but it doesn't matter. It's really not a big deal. Let's leave all the samples checked, so it might be a bit messy, and let's generate the brain. Processing samples, building synapses, and then let's generate the blocks. There you go, and now we should be able to press play. And we have sound. So this is my brain and this is my target. Let's normalize it. Very cool, let's start looking at some of the parameters. The first parameter that is worth having a look at is this first one, which basically decides on the model that is being used to create the analysis of the spectrum. So FFT is a very common thing in uh, DSP processing and it stands for fast Fourier uh, transform. Here it calls it raw frequency analysis on the manual, but I'm pretty sure that that's what they're using. And MFCC is something that I haven't heard of, is MEL frequency sepsural coefficients. I'm sure if we uh, give it to Google, uh, we'll, we'll return some um, meaningful results. But the interesting thing here is that you can blend between these two models and putting one to 0% or 100% bypasses the other, which makes it a bit more CPU efficient, which is quite helpful because one of the most common issues that I found mentioned online is that this thing is a CPU hog. I have a pretty powerful system, so I haven't really noticed this all that much, uh, but I'm sure it's true because it is indeed doing some pretty complicated stuff in the background. You can really tell that by using all the samples there is a whole bunch of stuff, uh, but it's quite interesting. So for example, one thing that I want to do right away is to, for example, let's only use the kick drums to uh, try and recreate the target. And so we need to regenerate brain and we should have some pretty different results, obviously. You're essentially changing the ingredients that is using to attempt a, a match uh, of the target sound. Yeah, it's obviously very different. Really cool. Very interesting here. You can sort of hear the original track through some sort of processing. Like if it's in a stuck buffer or something. Just for reference, let's have a listen to the original track, which is this one. You can really tell that it's using this as well. You can mix between the two. 
really cool. By the way, stereo mode is something that we can uh, try right away. Is essentially generating different streams for the left and right channel. So the results are stereo, but you can also use them as dual mono. Really cool. Really interesting. Moving on, the second option is essentially deciding whether you're using both frequency and dynamics to attempt a match or only the frequency. But basically this is using the normalized blocks. So it's not checking for the dynamic changes in the uh, brain contents to try and match the target sound. If you read in the manual, uh, all these parameters are really interesting and explained in details and I love that they included things like uh, the FFT subsection but it also says not that useful in practice so far. You can really tell uh, that this is an experimental thing that they've been working on and they're including controls that uh, might play a larger role in the future. But I'm just going to guide you through uh, what I think are are the most useful uh, so far and the things that had the most impact on the sound. Novelty and boredom are definitely an example uh, of such thing. So they work together and reading the manual, uh, you can use novelty to bias the selection away from similarity and prioritize similar blocks we haven't used yet. So it changes the block that is currently being used and boredom increases the speed at which novelty wears off, creating a wider spread of possible blocks to be used. There are a lot of things that are somehow similar uh, to uh, the base, to the concept behind granular synthesis. Let's have a listen to this. Another cool thing is the stickiness, this will have the effect of elongating chunks of brain samples that you hear, so it's pretty cool actually. As opposed to... And then the search stretch uses basically a time stretch. That's cool. I want to add some uh, more samples. Let's add the I had loop and some of the snares maybe. Let's regenerate the brain. Can you hear some of the hi hats and snares? The frequency content changed dramatically. Really cool. Then here you have all the different algorithms which change the sound dramatically. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but uh, please do have a look at the manual because it's actually really interesting. Uh, let's listen to them. So this basic is reversed. This synaptic. And this slide. Okay, I can't really tell the difference between synaptic and slide. Oh, yes, I can. How oh, really cool. So these uh, number, number of synapses and synaptic slide error only work in synaptic and slide mode. So let's have a listen to those. This increases the number of synapses being used, obviously. And synaptic slide error. This is quite interesting. In the manual it says that this controls the acceptable error to consider a block as close enough in slide mode. So this works in slide. Let's listen to it. <laughs> okay. There you go. Let's decrease the... Novelty. Uh, 
lot of fun. The next section are parameters that control the way the target sound is broken up uh, into uh, different blocks. So how about we change target? Let's uh, use another track of mine. This is the raw track. Move through it. Okay, should be fun. And let's regenerate the blocks. <laughs> let's bring it back to basic. So fun. So block size basically decides the size of the blocks in the sample. Let's see what happens. Let's decrease it. I hate that it's white on white, very unreadable. One thing that might be very fun is to use different block sizes for the target sound and for the brain content. So let's change it, let's see what happens. Then the block overlap controls the proportion to overlap the block generation. Not sure what that means, let's have a listen. Okay, so these are ratio essentially. Let's try and decrease it, 0 0.2. The window shape is also interesting, essentially are uh, volume envelopes that are applied to uh, the different blocks uh, before the analysis. The analysis. Uh, you can experiment with different ones, let's have a listen. Let's bring the block overlap to 0 0.80, I think it was before. Let's try different ones. Let's listen to the brain only. Bartlett. I actually think I might need to regenerate the blocks because this happens before the analysis. So to hear a difference, I need to regenerate the blocks. Okay, very different. Let's hear. Flash up. Very fun. So I'm actually sure that I yet to change, regenerate the blocks. Also, uh, once I change the block size and the block overlap, so that was a bit dumb. Uh, let's try put 0 0.4 and block size to uh, 2,000, and maybe let's change the block size here to I don't know. Uh, 500, literally putting random numbers in. So let's regenerate the brain. This is taking a long time. Wow, building the synapses now is taking uh, way longer than it used to. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that the block size influences very much the amount of time it takes to generate the brain, which makes sense. It's done, let's also regenerate the blocks, which I expect gonna take a long time as well. Actually, not that much. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, that's why I put 20,000 rather than 2,000. So let's try with 2,000 and let's regenerate the blocks. So it was getting pretty huge uh, block sizes. There you go, that's more like it. It is pretty cool. The parameters for the brain contents are identical to the target sound, so I'm not going to uh, repeat myself, uh, but 
these are all pretty cool things that we can experiment with. And then let's have a, just a brief look at the mix. We already sort of uh, briefly mentioned it. The autotune parameter is going to force the pitch or attempt to force the pitch of the incoming block from the brain contents into the block of the target sound that is trying to match. The normalized parameter is essentially flattening the dynamic and thus increasing the volume. This is designed to work with the frequency only search, as we said, which makes sense. You have less variations in dynamic. So it's basically not taking the dynamic from the actual brain content, but is generating it ex post. And then, as we mentioned, the brain target is going to blend between the two. It's quite cool to double check the pitch. There you go. Let's leave it all to brain. And then, as I said, the stereo mode basically runs separate block searches for the left and right speaker. You can record the samples, so let's make some samples. Let's open something like Ableton and let's do some editing and cleaning up. Or actually, let's use Cubase first because I have a quicker way to batch export my edits once I've done that. Let's grab all the left samples, put them here. Now let's get all the right samples. Let's put them here. Now let's hard pan both track, hard left and hard right. Let's try and make a new macro. Select and create cycle markers. Okay. And now we can export the audio mix down. The export window, we're gonna select multiple, export all cycle markers. And in the name, I'm going to use the circle marker name and sample brain. I use an underscore as a separator. Okay, export audio. Pretty cool. Now let's import stuff into uh, the Ableton sampler. I mean, now we can really have a lot of fun. We have. 10 pretty cool samples. Lots of fun, or we can even import them as separate audio loops and let the analyze with the warp. one. And I thought the tempo synced. To bring some effects. Let's start with the resonators. Which I normally love. Let's try with Berlin. Mm. 
some really cool stuff. I also want to make a contact instrument. Let's try that. Let's make a new instrument. So in the mapping editor and let's drag and drop these samples in. Let's drop them in. Let's actually make one per pitch. There you go. So you have them here. Wrong octave. If I want to process them separately, I can obviously make different groups with them, but let's just have a quick look. So one thing that could be cool be to put them in a time machine pro mode or maybe beat machine actually let's do that and we can open the wave editor and let's it do the analysis go on auto and it's going to select a number of slices to go pretty down for this one let's try it i'm not gonna go do one by one But it should be pretty cool. And now if I change the speed to zone, becomes tempo synced. Let's slow it down a lot. Put it to, I don't know, 180 BPM or something like that. Let's get some replica delay here as well. Some reverb. I love this one. Let's tweak this one a little bit. There's glitch in a box, really cool. Let's loop it. So let's put that the first one is only gonna play two times and then it goes on the second one is gonna play three times. And then it's going to continue on the sample. Really cool. Obviously, we can do a lot of stuff. And now the modular is calling my name. Hopefully this was fun. In conclusion, I really don't think this was a prank and I loved making samples with it. It's obviously glitchy as hell, but hopefully it was clear how much fun uh, you can have with it. One of those, always appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when I put a new video up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.